Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are building a piston engine. So this is a 3D print model that is exactly that, a model of a piston. And you can crank it and the piston goes up and down. It looks really freaking cool. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at this and building it up. I also noticed there's no instructions online on how to actually assemble this. All the files are free, but no instructions on how to actually put it together. So I assume this video can be used to help you guys build it. And you'll find a link to the original designer and all their files down below, and it's all free. So here's what we need. We need the piston body. We need nine bolts. These are topped with screw heads. Then we also have two bolts that are just fully threads, nothing else. One nut, four washers, and then the rest of the components that you can see there that are the main body parts. Oh yeah, and there's one bolt that only has a tiny bit of thread at the end. So yeah, I went ahead and I sprayed up the main chunks in silver, leaving all the bolts and washers in black to get a nice overall contrast. So to begin with, I went ahead and just assembled this one side piece. You can see it has a cutout which will allow us to put an axle through that. And there's many different ways I think you can actually put this together, but I'm gonna go over what I think is the simplest. And for the most part, it should be relatively simple. So we go ahead and screw all that on. And the other side, I'm not going to attach the other plate yet, as I'm now gonna start putting the piston together. So we've got this one bolt that has a tiny thread on one side and it's gonna get screwed on there with a nut. And this will allow this, of course, to rotate in that position. And that is done. There's also two more nuts you can print out too for additional places, but I don't think you actually need them. And I'll go over where they are later. Then you've got these two quarter circle pieces, and then we've got our handles and such here. So you'll notice that in this cutout, that is actually where the handle is going to end up sitting about there. So we want to get this in first. And you'll see that it's got a bit to slot it in there. So that protrusion part will go into there, which means the hole above it is what you want to connect to the piston. So you've got this part that has two holes on either side and you thread in the threaded only parts and they slot in here. I recommend adding a bit of glue to them just so they don't go anywhere. And then you can go ahead and add two of these spacers slash washers. These are a tight fit and I did try without and it did not work as well. So these are a requirement, I would say. And that's the main assembly built. Now those two nuts I was talking about, they could have been fitted onto the threaded pieces once this has now been assembled, but you just don't need it. It's not gonna come apart. So then go and add the washers and spacers onto the far sides of each side. And then we are pretty much done. We just need to move this in so it goes into there and you'll see that we have this bit that protrudes on this side. So we can go ahead and put this plate on now. And again, just tighten up those bolts on the side and you've got yourself basically the whole thing done as we just need to add the handle. Now I've got no idea if this is how the original designer intended this to be assembled. It does have slots in both the plates, so I assume it's somehow supposed to be assembled together and then slotted in from above, but this was just to me a lot easier to add the plate on at the very last step. As a result, it ended up just being a very easy build. And you can see the piston is moving there, so all we need to do is add in our final piece, which is the handle. And again, this is the only other part that I would maybe recommend a little bit of glue, but only when you're fully happy with it and you're like probably not going to be taking it apart too often or stuff like that. And if you do plan to take this apart and have like a child or something build it, then certainly leave it uh, unglued because it's easier to assemble this without that handle being on there. Now I recommend when 3D printing this to go with a lightning infill only because it really doesn't need to have much structural integrity. It works incredibly well and you can make it very, very light. And the only thing I would change is you'll notice the handle when it comes fully down, it's actually touching the surface of whatever it's sitting on, which makes it feel kind of sticky when you're rotating it and it doesn't need to be. So when printing the handle out, I actually recommend sinking it into the base plate a little bit, even just a couple of millimeters, so that you end up with a little bit of clearance when you're actually cranking it. And overall, it doesn't need to be as long as well, but other than that, that is the only minor change I would overall make when it comes to actually printing this out and trying it out for yourself. Now, I expect the originals there actually meant for something like this as the setup where it's overhanging, and then you can rotate the handle over a clear surface like this and it really does work incredibly well. So this is a cool thing, it looks great, kind of great for teaching how a combustion engine works, and just overall extremely good. I'm very happy with it, came out looking brilliant, and you could actually probably supersize this too, like you could go big with this bad boy, and it would look extremely cool. So yeah, very, very happy with this, and yeah, highly recommend it if you want to give it a go yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.